radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. A little technical snafu on one of the channels on one of the audio feeds going out. So that's what I was doing. I was fixing stuff. How is everybody doing? This is Fade to Black. It is February 23rd, 2023. Welcome, everybody listening all around the world. Tonight, our guest is Dr. Chris Macklin. He's back with us. And uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about off-planet AI and its effects on humanity in this planet. And uh, some other stuff, too, as well. Uh, But tonight's going to be kind of like a a show of technical stuff, the things I love to talk about. And uh, before I bring uh, uh, Chris in, I want to let all the fader knots know, I was texting right before the show with Chuck Faye from China. That's right. Chuck Faye from China, one of the great radio hosts out there. And... He is the voice of our community over in China, and everybody here knows uh, Chuck, and he's been with us for many, many years. Chuck is on his way over to the United States, and we're going to do a show live here from The Bunker, and that's going to be coming up here in a couple of weeks. Very excited about that. And, you know, here we're doing a show tonight about AI, uh, which is actually off-planet AI. But when we think about China's AI, and how they monitor everything, including this show. They now know Chuck Fay is going to be here live in the bunker next month. <laughs> oh, man. Chuck, um, uh, I want to get this show started, but uh, this was a couple of years ago. I can't wait to get Chuck on the show, and we can laugh about this. Um, he uh, he sent me a text and uh, from China. And Jimmy, you know, so I got to tell you about this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And uh, by the way, and I'm reading the text, you know, and I'm thinking, man, you're texting me from China on a Chinese cell phone with this stuff. Delete, delete, delete. I'm like, dude, what are you, don't send me this stuff. Oh, man. It was awesome. It was a great text. And, and Chuck is a guy that uh, when you're covering subjects like uh, UFOs and conspiracies and and all the stuff that we talk about on this show in China, you know they've got their eyes on you. So don't text me. <laughs> don't text me. Oh, man. I'll see you when you get here to the stage when it's all safe and, and clear. But anyway, Chuck Faye is going to be here uh, next month, and I'm very excited about that. Um, Chuck sent me, I, I was so proud of it. I, I posted it so many times. This is probably uh, maybe 10 years ago. He texted me a picture of him on the Great Wall of China wearing a, a fade to black shirt, and it was one of the coolest things uh, that, that anybody has ever sent me. He's one of the best, and uh, Chuck Faye is going to be with us next month. So with that, tonight we have Dr. Christopher Macklin. Uh, We are going to be discussing off-planet AI, transhumanism. We're going to be talking a little nanotech as well and their effects on humanity. Um, His research findings, uh, uh, he he pulls it all from scientific evidence, uh, intuitive information, and, and divine connection which makes him uh, not only a great friend of the show, but he is well-respected. He speaks all around the world, and he is a medical consultant. His website is globalenlightenmentproject.com. The links for it are below on our website and throughout social media. So go and follow, like, and subscribe, 
uh, to uh, Dr. Chris Macklin. And with all of that, let's just get straight to it and say, welcome back to the show, Chris. How are you, sir? Oh, wait, uh, Dr. Macklin, I've got you muted. See, that technical snap, <laughs> that, that was me. That was me. It wasn't me, look, hands feet. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, bless you. Yeah, Thank wonderful, Jimmy. Thanks for having me back on. It's wonderful. It's uh, wonderful it's, to be here. It's great to have you with us, and we've got so much to discuss tonight for sure. Um, but I actually kind of want to start here before um, we're going to get to some technical definitions so everybody understands what the heck uh, we're going to be talking about tonight. We'll get to that. But um, you've been covering uh, so much uh, throughout your career and speaking out about a lot of things. But did you ever expect, uh, Chris, for things to be where they are today with with ET and contact and the government and Congress and the Department of Defense and ODI and, and 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 science and and physics and and universities? This and we're shooting stuff out of the sky now too, as well. Did you ever expect uh, this 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 thing that we're in the middle of to have happened? Honestly, um, I didn't expect it to get as bad as it is. <laughs> I think the whole thing's crazy, right? You know, the world's upside down. And, uh, you know, people will say, well, how, how do you navigate it? You know, and the answer is I don't live in fear. You know, ah, it's all okay. You know, um, out there is crazy. For me, I think we're all normal here. You know, to me, out there is crazy. So we're good to go. You know, to Let them get on with the crazy stuff. We'll get on with the good stuff, you know, and... Uh, and stay out of it. Stay out of the matrix, you know. It, really, really important. Yeah. And what, what do you think um, ultimately, uh, when I say the government, that includes the military and all of those three-letter agencies, what do you think their agenda is right now? What, because it seems like, and I, 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 I think that I'm wrong, but it seems like they want to be our friend all of a sudden. Right after years of teasing and ridicule and accusations, and now, now suddenly they're they, they want to buddy up uh, to our community. Uh, what, what do you think that agenda is? Well, I think it's a um, false flag agenda. I think they want to create false flags. I think they want to divert people's attention not onto the deep state manipulation, but onto something else, so that you know, get people engaged with off-planet ETs. I mean, there's a lot of things in the news at the moment. It's very interesting to watch. But I think, uh, you know, there's definitely an agenda to distract people from uh, what's really going on, you know, uh, in the deep state system, you know. Yeah, it not it interesting? <laughs> okay, you can laugh, but I don't think it's that funny. In, 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 in a strange way it is, but it's this. Where, you know, if you go back to Roswell and everything over the years, oh, no, it's a weather balloon, right? It's a weather balloon. It's a weather balloon. And now here we are 70, 80 years later, and we're talking about UAPs and contact and things. And now now they're swinging back to now we're shooting down weather balloons. It's like, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it's it? crazy. It's false flag stuff, though. I think they are weather balloons, of course. You know, I mean, let's be honest, craft, you know, off planet craft go that fast. They wouldn't be able to get hold of them. Plus, they have tractor beam, you know, protection. So, you know, they're not going to get in, um, they're not going to get within that craft. They're not going to be able to shoot it down. So, you know, I think uh, definitely uh, false flag distraction. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're not off the mark at all. Um, uh, now, you know, the definition of false flag and, you know, if we go directly at what that definition is, uh, it's different. Now it's like a pop culture term, right? Where it, it means a lot of different things, but in, in this application, I think you're absolutely right. We've got an agenda. We've got the media dealing with this. And then suddenly missiles flying around North America, shooting at unknown objects. Kind of feels false flagish to me. There's there's something up. They're doing it for another reason. That that's the deal. Well, it's also to get people in fear. I mean, I know they've got uh, uh, solid 
holographic insert type technology. Mm-hmm. And so they can they can make something fly over you. It looks real, you know. If you touch it, it feels real, but it but it's not. You know, it's just a it's just a holographic insert. It's interesting because when I came to America, and I just got to share this with you because it's really interesting. So want to be American citizen. So of course you've got to have a you know a medical. So the the doctor sits there and he says, I've got some questions from Homeland Security. Said, okay, you know. And one of them, he said, I've got to look at your response in your eyes. So he's looking at my eyes. He goes, um, have you ever been somewhere like a shopping mall or somewhere and uh, it felt surreal? Uh, everything felt surreal. People weren't communicating properly and everything else. I knew exactly what he's talking about because I've been in those situations. And, you know, so pardon could you can you tell me that again <laughs> and he, he got a bit frustrated well clearly not you know so he put no one <laughs> so what he was trying to see is and uh walmart uses technology very interesting and what it is is holographic inserts what they do is they change the environment you're in it's like putting a bit of software in this third dimensional world to change the environment change the look of things for example you know i went to a walmart once i walked in i don't go there anymore by the way so apologies for that I walked in, and on the right-hand side, there's a subway and bolted-down tables. Tables were missing. On the way in, there was no trolleys. And there's this guy just standing there, and I said, there's no trolleys. <laughs> there's no trolleys. Uh, okay. you know. So I walked in. The whole the whole thing had changed inside, the colors, the light, and everything. I said, hmm, hang on. Is this a holographic insert? Yep. Walked out, took it out, walked back in. It was back to normal. Incredible. So they have this technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. The um, and what is what we're going to be talking about tonight, and the possibility this when um, when the conversation started about five years ago about the possibility of us being in a simulation didn't come from our community, which is what you would expect it from. You know, us crazy you know, tinfoil hat wearing. No, it came from Silicon Valley. It came from tech CEOs. It came from Elon Musk and with with these statements. And I stepped back, Chris, and I said, wait a minute. These are very intelligent people running very big companies, sitting on piles of money. But what is it that they know that I don't know? There's something here. And the more that the conversation started, now I'm not, I'm not saying uh, we could be living in a simulation. I'm saying that I don't care. It, you know, what if we are? What does it change? What does it change in my world? What does it change in yours? Does it stop us from doing this show if you and I are in a simulation right now? No, our world is no. the same. So, am I going to freak out about it? What what would freaking out do? It's more about understanding the why and how the technology and and where it's coming from. I think that's the, where what what should be explored instead of freaking out. What what's that going to change? And am I wrong with having that worldview? No, no, I think you're absolutely right. <clears throat> I always encourage everybody, you know, to take back your power. You know, I don't believe in gurus. I don't believe in all this sort of thing. You are your own guru, but people give their power away to the matrix to, you know, they give their power away to the deep state things and, oh, my goodness, you know, how are we going to get through this? Well, don't worry about it. It's not your deal. You know, like you say, we're going to, you know, encourage everyone to do what they do best, you know, that God gift, you know. I mean, you know, you do an amazing job, Jimmy, and, you know, you're, you're a great host, and so it's a gift, you know. Not everyone has that gift. I do healings all day. We work on about 2,000 people a week. And I, you know, I get well into it. You know, I don't do anything else. Don't do the accounting, nothing. I just focus on that. Mm-hmm. And when you know, in in um, when we're off, you know, uh, relaxing, you know, I go back in nature. I, you know, like cooking. We have a glass of wine or whatever, and and you know, put some music on and have a laugh. You know, do the things that give you passion. You know, it's really important now, especially at this stage, because it's easy to buy into that fear, but. But I do think, you know, I see this world being like the younger games. I think part of the planet's not visible. I think they have put us in a shroud uh, where, you know, you can't see outside this shroud that they've 
contained us within, but so what? You know, who cares? You know, like you say, we're still having a great time, <laughs> even in the younger games. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The, the grass still smells like grass. You remember that scene in The Matrix with uh, Agent Smith? They're sitting in the restaurant and he's holding up that steak, right? And he twists it. I know it's not real. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it tastes juicy. Uh, well, okay, yeah, exactly. I mean, the steak still is juicy. The grass, exactly. you know, the grass still smells green, and and the forest, and and my daughters are still my daughters, even though they're ones and zeros in a simulation. I still love them just the same. Um, exactly. let, let's let's get into this for a second. When um. All right, let's get let's start with um uh, some definitions uh when uh, we're we're going to be talking about ai but off planet ai is is quite a bit different right um what is off planet ai versus ai well off planet ai i think is more um like the nanotechnology you know they have technology like nanotech which which is just as powerful, but of course, 10 to the minus nine small. And, you know, this is, I mean, in fact, the AI, the off-planet AI has been bought on planet, you know, and it was it was done a long time ago, probably in the 1950s. Um, we've been obviously developing it, um, particles and things to be able to read people's bodies, to be able to transmit frequencies on 5G. Uh, they used to use satellite frequencies, terahertz frequencies, but now they, they use 5G, of course, because they've got towers all over the place. But I think um, off-planet AI, I mean, if, if you look at AI, um, you know, I was looking the other day, and NASA's developed a, um, a warp-type drive that can go almost the speed of light, you know, and I was watching this, so I was very interested, and I thought, wow. But, you know, this, this stuff is available, of course, but how do you go you know, just under the speed of light and be able to navigate with all the planets and different things in the way, you'd have to have a very, very uh, fast, complex uh, navigation system to make sure you don't drive into something, you know. So it's fine having the warp drive. Uh, it's not fine when you travel through space almost at the speed of light, knocking into things, you're not going to survive very long. So uh, the AI, obviously uh, quantum computers, you know, you can... You can fit the uh, every single document ever produced and you know video I've produced on the size of a pinhead. So, if you've got that technology, you can imagine that you know put that in a robot and you know you're going to get some really intelligent AI systems uh, in place. I have thought about that so much. Um, it, it, the idea that there are different different ways of traveling really really fast. All right. And and some of them don't even involve movement, right? If you're folding space or, you know, the, 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 those ideas and those principles. But if you are in a conventional spacecraft that has the ability to go in a straight line at the speed of light, you are passing stuff and driving through stuff a lot. How <laughs> is it possible at the speed of light to know that you are heading towards a planet, you would never see it. You, you wouldn't. That's no, no. You you would you would fly through it. You would have. You know how is that accomplished? You know it, it, the idea, the science fiction part of it. It's great. It's great to think about. What is that? Oh, that's you. Okay. You don't hear that. No, I don't actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, 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 it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, how is would that be accomplished? And so, if we take that off the table, there must be another way to travel these great distances. If you're, you know, if you don't want to run into stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, you look at black holes. You know, my belief the black holes are super highways to get to the other end of the universe, and. Uh, I know, you know, if people fly, you know, this end, um, obviously you fly fast to get to the black hole, then it sucks you in, and then suddenly you you spat out the other end, um, uh, the other side of the universe, but there's sort of, you know, in 27 minutes. So you can imagine that the, the speed is way beyond the speed of light. That's why, but they are super highways, you know, in the universe, and, uh, you know, the magnetic pole is, is just incredible. 
So do you need all that fuel and everything else? The answer is no. You know, um, you just have to get to those entrances. Yeah. And nanotechnology. What's the definition? Well, nanotechnology, I've been working with it for about 14 years. Nanotechnology is 10 to the minus 9 small um, computing systems. But it's interesting because these particles, you know, if you create a particle like a graphene oxide tube, within it is a complementary metal oxide array. You know, you think, well, how, how, how do you fit that in? Well, these things are grown, but they're also bound with other materials like nylons, like silicates and everything else. So they have the ability to grow. And people say, well, how would you make, um, how would you make nylon grow? It's, it's the way they've been bound. I mean, this is gray technology, the Zeta gray technology that we've been given, you know, since the 1940s and we've just developed it. But of course it can monitor your body. It can be used for good, you know, where it can monitor your body. It can go in and it can navigate itself around and probably with, uh, having some nanotech uh, kind of limbs on it can actually break down cancer tumors and different things, you know. So, or it could be used just to monitor your body, of course. Um, you know, they can see what compounds in your body, they can see your heart rate, they can see if you're on a menstrual cycle, your hormone levels, everything. So, you know, it's, it's pretty invasive. How does uh, a piece of nanotech stay powered? How to stay powered? It's um, it uses the energy of the body, so it taps in the energy of the body, and that, that's the thing about these things. If you take them out of the body, they they become paralyzed. They're useless. Yeah, they're it in. uses it uses your own energy of the body, but to grow, it also uses. I mean, what do you need for growth? You know, uh, carbon. Well, you know, graphene is carbon. Then you've got oxygen, and then you've got water, and you've got uh, warmth, and you know the body's got all that. But but to power it, it uses the actual own energy of your body, which is an incredible energy. People don't realize how much energy we have in our bodies. Now the the warnings, right? That that our our, our community is really good at being aware. We are. And we warn ourselves. Uh, we. We try to warn the rest of the world, but they they don't listen. But the the, the word singularity and and coming up to that point um, is something that we've been talking about for a very long time. Is this a combination of uh, of of crossing that line, that Rubicon of singularity, where um, we won't be able to back back off of it, and this technology then? will overtake is there a possibility there and is that the singularity that we should be concerned about i think it is yeah because i think i mean you know look at uh, robots uh, like I say if you can store i mean the thing is about a robot it's always logical you know i always tell people like you know people buy them as like you know husband or wife or robotics and it's a robot it's logical you know so is it going to feel like God, like flutter connection, like oh, I'm in love with you? Uh, absolutely not. It can, it can try and describe it, but it can't feel that like God-given kind of gift, uh, which is in a human being. So you know, right there is like red flags. But, but I think the robotic and the AI could get that smart that it could start deciding for itself. I'm kind of done with this human race, you know. So, and want to exterminate it. So. Um, so yeah, it's 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 something to worry about, I think, for sure. And I, I think also it, it you know, with having a, a partner as like a robot, which I know they do a lot in China, they you know, because people don't have chance to go dating, they just get this robot, you'll do. But you know, that desensitizes, I think, people, you know, uh, to true love, you know, the love element of the whole, you know, world. It, it's just a logical trying to please you, you know, type robotic system. And what um, now we're going to start to really get into this now that we've got this set up um, is, is there a danger or what is the danger of this technology being introduced into our world, uh, changing who we are? Well, we'll talk about consciousness in a second, but, but what about ourselves and our soul and who we are and, and certainly the spiritual journey too as well? If if nanotech and AI starts to really be intrusive in our world. 
Well, I think it really is now. And, and I think, uh, I mean, it's in chemtrails, it's in other methods of ingestion. Um, a lot of people have got it in, but but it doesn't always replicate in the body. That, why is that? Because it depends on the immune response. So you have to damage the DNA to allow the stuff to replicate. But but when you allow it to replicate, you know, you become, you kind of become transhuman because it starts growing through your body. And this stuff's got a consciousness, an AI consciousness, but still a consciousness. It can change your thought patterns. It can change brain waves. Uh, it can monitor your body. So, um, yeah, it's 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 real and it exists, you know. And, and well, let's stay right there. Um, is it does consciousness exist in or out of the physical? In, in that, right? Is consciousness part of particles, or and it, it comes from that, or does it originate outside of the body? Consciousness, I think, well, the body's connected to consciousness. And, of course, consciousness is the connection, the God type, in quotes, connection, whatever you want to call God. I mean, I, I define God as God, Goddess, prime creator of all it is. It's a good masculine, feminine balance. But I think, you know, getting con getting connected um, spiritually um, uh, through your third eye and everything else, uh, your crown to your higher self, which is off-planet, um, I think that's essential. And I think, so if you look at consciousness, part of it's within you, of course, which is part of your soul. And then, of course, it's connected to other realms in different dimensions where wherever your soul is from. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's both, I think. Well, okay. So now let's back up and talk about the nanotech and certainly AI, which would be controlled uh, and originate on a computer system made of particles, right? Okay, so um, the idea of nanotech becoming conscious, which scares the crap out of everybody, but, uh, and then AI itself, if it can truly become sentient and, and carry consciousness, would that be different from the our version of the human consciousness and, and what makes us us? It would be because you know our connection is supposed to be <clears throat> with your starseed family or prime creator, whatever you want to call it. Now the AI is manufactured to connect, I think, to reptilian elements that can control you. You know, to me, reptilian, you know, reptilian energy now is is very addictive. And so, you know, if you're doing, you know, take a pornography site, you know, why is it so addictive? Uh, it's because it's got reptilian energy and people just can't leave it alone, you know. Um, and so it's an important factor, I think, uh, that it's connecting to lower vibrational consciousness so that it brings our consciousness down. And so we can't connect back to the the God realm we're supposed to. And I've seen that a lot, actually. I mean, I've seen people with this AI within them, uh, with the DNA altered, where, you know, basically what happens, because your soul you know, when, when, when you first lie there, it becomes a fetus. You've got three months to get a soul in. So the soul selected to get the right vibration and the right interface so that when it bonds into the fetus, it sits well in the body. Now, what happens if you change that DNA over the period of time? Then the soul lifts out because it doesn't interface into the body anymore. And that's why I think you see quite a number of people checked out, you know, almost checked out. Like there's nothing there because they're not, they're not completely in their body. They're lifting maybe an inch or two out because the soul can't stay there. So that's a great way of, you know, getting like, for example, archonic beings, you know, to actually attach to you and take over the body. And I'm seeing that a lot at the moment. It's, it's pretty is, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is um, is, is it possible um, that nanotech and, and AI – could become fully conscious and then we wouldn't know the difference? I don't think it'll ever be fully conscious. Um, I think it will pretend to be fully conscious. <clears throat> and, you know, I see sometimes people, you know, think they're in contact with God, you know, oh, I'm talking to God. And, you know, if you take the reptilian element, like, for example, Anunnaki Draconians, you know, they connect to them and they always give you three truths, one lie. So they'll tell you something truth about yourself and things that happen. Oh, my God, I'm in connection. And then they'll give you one big lie to send you off course of your divine path. 
And I think um, that's the sort of consciousness, you know, we're talking about, the, you know, the not fully God-connected. Uh, it'll still be, you know, it, it, it depends who manufactures the stuff. If the greys are manufacturing it or, you know, the reptilians, then, of course, they want it um, in keeping with their level of consciousness. And so that's what's happening. The um, you just mentioned uh, the the DNA uh, aspect of this uh, changing. How is that happening? Um, well, of course, CRISPR technology they have, which um, can be injected or whatever, um, splices the genetics, and therefore, once that's happened, you you know your DNA is completely altered, which means that your the body you know interface with the soul is not going to happen. So what happens to the soul is it goes on an umbilical cord. It lifts out the body a little bit so that, you know, so that it's it can stay around the body, but it can't be within it. And that's why, you know, a lot of people who have a DNA altered um, kind of look, look like they're kind of checked out. But they do get aggressive as well. And the reason for that is, is because once the soul's left the body and it's lifted out a bit, in come archons and they take over the body. So, and they're aggressive Beings, they have no, they have no body. You know, the archons float through the second, third, and fourth dimension, so they have no body, but they can attach to you and, uh, you know, um, alter the mind, alter your thoughts, and things like this. And if, if you're lifted out of your body with your soul, you have no, not complete control of your body. That's one of the problems, I think. It, it, nature had it figured out pretty good, right? We've got billions of years of, of, of DNA. Not only in humans, everything on this planet shares the same DNA, right? So altering it and CRISPR technology and, and genetically altering things, you're messing with something that's already been running pretty good. Why oh, yeah. Would, yeah, why would you do that? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, I think the agenda is depopulation, you know, personally. And I think, uh, you know, depopulation, but also control. You know, if you alter someone's DNA and they're not completely in control of their body, then uh, and a, another being enters the body, then they've got control of you, you know, complete control of you. And that's one, one of the problems, I think. Would you know it if, uh, would an individual know it if it happened? Um, some people... <laughs> Jimmy, I think it depends how self-aware you are. A lot of people aren't self-aware, you know. And I think, you know, for example, I mean, people just go to work, you know, earn a paycheck, come home, go to the store, cook food, watch TV, go to bed. And then, oh, we're doing the same tomorrow and then same tomorrow. You know, they're not really self-aware. They're not looking at, hang on a minute, you know. But for, for people who are self-aware, I've seen they do feel different. And they, I, I don't like this, you know. I, I want to get back. And so we've helped a lot of people get back, you know, f to their sovereign being again by, you know, all resetting the DNA and repairing the chromosomes and, and things like this. Um, now, we have, uh, and, and I know you've mentioned, you know, reptilians and, and, and archons, but is there, uh, are you aware of the origination, right? There's a progenitor for all of this. Is there a specific specific race of beings that um uh, are are introducing this to us yeah the nanotech is is introduced by the greys because they messed up their own planet and of course they've been abducted people to use the sperm and eggs to create their humanoids um and that's been happening since the you know paperclip project got transferred here so i think um you know they they want to you know create like bio bio robotic type being so they can keep their race alive but of course they do look different so they're the guys who actually gave us the technology you know for abducting the people and and what about the ai part of this um well what in terms of, oh, in where, terms of where, receiving? no it's origination oh i think i think i think a lot of races off planet have got ai you know uh, for sure I mean, you know, some planets have got complete learning systems, but if you use it in the right way, it could be really useful. Like, you know, if you ask you, if you had an AI system in your house where it's got every single document, every bit of, and you ask it, okay, how does this work? It will explain it to you, you know, and I think that's useful because 
that's powerful and it's 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 supportive but if you use it for you know not so good agendas then of course it's it's not so useful you know? when when i listen to a uh, theoretical physicist today astrophysicist too as well ah that's cool. quantum uh uh, they all are trying to suggest the same thing. Multiverse, multi-worlds, multiple dimensions, um, and entanglement, which would suggest to me that we may not <clears throat> see or understand this stuff directly, no matter what it may be. But then when we have our own contact experiences, in in the community we have always talked about something interdimensional something that has appeared and disappeared in front of our eyes i've seen it myself chris I've seen it oh yeah i've as well <laughs> I, I, i've seen it i don't care if people think i'm crazy it's just i've seen it I, I, and and i can't quite figure out what's going on but we've been talking about it the crazy but this is what science is suggesting to us today and the other part is they don't necessarily see what is going on in the, out there in the universe because it may not be part of our wavelength. It just may not be running in the same time scale that we are in. Therefore, we're just blind to it, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at, you know, if you, I mean, I always look at uh, <clears throat> dimensions as frequencies. And I think, you know, if you're on a different time, you know, frequency, but same space, the time space continuum is different so you could be on this planet where everything looks completely different because everything's vibration you know i mean we know like concrete's vibration you know sheetrock's vibration everything's vibration and so you know if you alter that vibration to a different and tuned it into a, a higher frequency or whatever then you're not gonna be able to see it i mean i i have the gift of seeing these beings and the second fourth and you know fifth dimension, I can tune in, I can see craft, you know, and I know some of the craft, they can actually tune their craft into this dimension, they can tune it out, so they they cloak themselves. But I can still see them when they're cloaked, because, you know, I remember when I was four, you know, I said, Dad, there's a, there's a, there's a flying saucer thing there. Where? You know, you couldn't see it, and I could see it clear as day, and I, I still see them now. So, can you... Stop right there, Chris. I got to hear about that. <laughs> you, you, so you, you're doing this today, and I love that. What do they look like? What do you see? Most of them I've seen. Um, uh, it's interesting. I went to, a, I'm going to give you an example if I may. So I went to a ranch, and um, uh, I have two what they call watches. Watches. So, you know, three, three watches. And so I went to a ranch, and um, the person was having some problems with greys, you know, and what was happening is that um, he'd go to bed next morning, one of his horses, you know, and he was a horse sanctuary, one of the horses was just being bits all over the floor because they kind of half eaten it. And so he wanted to stop this. So I went there and I knew that it was a portal. So I spent two days coding and messing about with this portal. And suddenly we opened it. It was great. But then when we opened it, these watches turned up, you know, and they were about a mile away. But they're actually visible, but I saw them before, and then they, they tuned into this dimension so you could see them, and the guy himself saw them. And they were actually floating you know, like three to one and three to one, and, and of course you can use telepathy. So I said, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, we're keeping an eye on you because we know how crazy you are. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because honestly, Jim, in, what happened is with the with the portal, normally it opens on the ground, and of course they know what I'm like, I'll just walk through it, and then you could be in trouble, who knows. So they opened it about 300 feet above, and I was watching things just fall out of it, you know, like craft and uh, different things. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, have you seen uh, Caroline Corey's new film, A Terror in the Sky? No, no I haven't touched it. Okay, check it out. Check out the film's documentary. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, I'll send you the link. Don't worry about it. I'll, uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get you all, yeah, I'll get y'all hooked up. But but there's a moment in the film. There's a reason why it's called a tear in the sky. It's exactly what you just saw. Like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she captures this on film, right, and collects all of the scientific data. She's got a lot of scientists there and and equipment and sensors and stuff. 
but she's got this thing. This thing opens up uh, over Catalina and 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 craft are coming out of it. It's like 50, 30, 50 objects. Um, it's a tremendous thing to see, but it also answers a lot of questions, right? Well, how are they getting here? Well, I don't know how they're doing it, but we can watch them do it, right? I, I don't know how this process happens. But we- <laughs> Well, they kind of open portals, and you know, uh, when they drop out the portal, uh, of course, they come here. And, um, but you know, they're they're coming from a different dimension, you know. So, um, I mean, to me, there's ultimate dimensions. It's infinite, you know. So, and I see them, you know. Uh, the Mekizdat beings were are from the infinite dimension. I was born, as you know, as a Mekizdat being, and there's five of us here doing stuff. And, Right. But I don't want people to, you know, sometimes you get emails, wow, well, you know, the Mekizdak beings are really dark. No, 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 no. That's the Mekizdak order. The order, you know, which was set up here as the Magi and everything else, has been hijacked, like like everything. Almost everything's been hijacked, you know. Uh, religions and, you know, um, you know, different things. So I don't want people to get mixed up with the Mekizdak beings as opposed to the order, because the Mekizdak order is a, third dimensional let's go to church let's you know worship them because that be whatever they do who knows mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, but it's been hijacked because it's gone south you know like everything else you said there's five of you yeah and are you guys in contact i know i've asked you this before but uh, for the audience that may or uh, remember or they they probably don't chris to be honest with you. um uh they forgot me. <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> um, are, are you guys in contact? Yeah, I am. One of them were not, because um, one of them is, uh, everyone thought she died, and that was Princess Diana. Um, but I am in contact by telepathy. But the other ones I'm in contact with, except for one who's uh, a fallen one, which which is in England. So don't have much to do with that one. Um, now... Is there, we always talk about, um, mm, I remember when I first started doing interviews, you know, 10 years ago, and I would always ask, I don't care, you know, it, it might have been Jim Mars one week or it's somebody else the next week, and and I would always go, you know, okay, man, so who's the new world order? Who's really sitting at the table? I want names. And that was part of my innocence of this because we hear about it so much. Um, And I would always try to get to something that is probably nameless, right? It's probably faceless. It's a different type of uh, situation. Um, But is that, that shall remain faceless and nameless. Is that, is that, who is in control of of an AI that would be, you know, in touch of uh, with humanity and and certainly this nanotechnology as well? Is it is it something running behind the you know behind the curtain? Oh yeah. <clears throat> well, I have the ability to remote view, and you know, you probably know there's massive caverns under the planet with Anunnaki beings with. Uh, uh, other reptilians, um, other races, you know, like, for example, um, there's also the Luciferians. And, you know, uh, now it's interesting with the greys because about, I'll lose track of time now, but about, say, five years ago, I chaired the Galactic Federation meeting to discuss whether the grey should be uh, removed from the planet. Now, I'm digressed a bit, but anyway, I thought I'd just tell you this whole so, you know, there's a lot of beings there, things happen, and we were discussing, you know, what's the difference between education and violation? It's a very close call, you know. So, for example, you come down here, you've got all these beings like Anunnaki, Draconians, you've got Luciferians, you've got snake beings, you've got this, that, and the other, which can attach to you and manipulate you, but you can't see them. Is that a violation? No. Why is that? Because when you come here, they tell you about it. They show you, look, these beings are there. You've got to learn by the power of map of intent to get rid of them. So, you know, in quotes, prayer, I don't like the word prayer, but maps of intent. So is that a violation? No, it's an education. You know, we're here to be educated on how to deal with these beings. But if a race suddenly sign up uh, with governments to, you know, abduct your people and steal their sperm and eggs and, you know, 
and uh, cells and everything else, is that a violation? Absolutely, because they have no permission over your body. Mm. So so they were swept off the planet by the Actorians. I think it was, I know it's June, but, you know, because of this thing that's gone on for the last few years, I've lost track of time, I don't know about you. And you think, when was that? <laughs> but, uh, but it was about five years ago. So what they did, they swept them off the planet. So the cheeky things, what they did is... Uh, they now come back in portal, so they stay within a portal because they're banned in the third dimensional time space continuum. So what they're doing is sitting in portals and manipulating people from there. So they're getting over the ban because they're not in this time space, they're in a different time space. So I thought that was interesting. But the main, um, I think the one world order agenda is to reduce the population, of course. Why is that? Because they want all these reptilians up on the planet. So that's why I think they're spraying all these geoengineering, blocking out the sun, uh, reducing uh, the oxygen, because these things don't breathe the same level as oxygen we do. But of course, meanwhile, they've produced hybrids of themselves, human hybrids, which can be up here and infiltrate themselves in governmental systems and the uh, royalty and everything else. So that's why we've got a big problem. But But... The, the, the controlling influence is the reptilian, luciferian, archon agenda, you know. When I was a kid, okay, now I'm uh, I'm older than you. I'm 60. You're supposed to laugh. I'm 60. I'm 33. We're gonna... <laughs> so, I, I'm a little kid. Uh, I'm like 10 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old. AM radio on my nightstand listening to late night talk radio i'm listening to some crazy ass dude like me right and i'm and i'm dialing in i'm listening and, and he said something now you got to remember this is 1973 okay yeah it's a long time ago and i'm listening and and this is what he said it it, it changed me so i'm and, you know it's midnight i'm 10 in the dark and he goes okay when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about the Illuminati and who is really running the world. And I'm like, what do you say? You know, <laughs> yeah. so now well, I didn't know that was happening. <laughs> and, and I've got to get up and go to school right in the morning. And I'm up all night listening to him. And this is what he says. All right. Now, I've never heard this version of things uh, since. I never forgot it. Chris, he says this, since Stone Age man, there was a tribe that was bigger and stronger than all the other tribes. And they continue to run the world, right? And he sets it up like that, like all those, you know, dinosaurs, right? <laughs> that this, this thing um, uh, just controlled from the beginning from from dominance uh over everything else and i never forgot that i never it, it just made so much sense that you don't have to be out front you don't have to be obvious and if you've been doing it for millions of years you've got it all figured out so nobody would know Right, and I've never, I've never forgotten that that mindset that uh, this has been going on since the dawn of man. Oh, it has, yeah. And there's always control, and you know, it's interesting to see how how it's going to change because I think it needs to change. I mean, we're doing a pyramid project. Um, I think I told you this last time. I don't, did I tell you about this last time? But we're building some off-planet pyramids. Um, One's 999.99 feet tall, 666.66 feet tall, 333.33 feet tall. They're going to be put on the golden curve, but the biggest one will sit on the ley line. Now, they're built off planet in the 12th dimension, so how do they get them here? Through portals and anti-gravitational craft and everything else. But when they arrive, um, they're going to really help um, blow out all the satanic symbology out of the ley lines and also raise the vibration of the planet to a point where these reptilian in, you know, beings can't actually live here because they can't live in that high vibration. So that'll be interesting. Where, where are they being built? 
I know you uh, said in the twelfth dimension or another dimension, but where? They're actually on a planet, um, the Actorian planet. I actually don't know the name of the planet, but the Actorians are building, and mm -hmm. uh, they've been building them for probably I don't know, now on a thousand years, um, because they knew at this time they'd be needed, and they they kind of team up because that beings work very closely with the Actorians. You know, um, I know there's Actorian beings here, star seeds, and there's a lot of them. You know, have you been, you tell. Chris? Have you been to Egypt? Do you know what happens? Um, the, there's a reason for it, but I will go one of these days. Uh, why, why haven't you gone? There's there's some craft which are meant for us to pick up, and they're hidden at the moment, so I don't want to go there and disturb anything. But but when we go there, they're DNA and voice activated. So you know, when you go there and pick them up, they'll just happen and jump in them and off you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're, they're powered by the mind, so that's why I've never been there. And I'd love to go, but never been led. But I'm sure it's coming soon. It's a it's a game changer, man. I just got back, um, and we're not going to spend a, a time talking about my trip to Egypt, but um, absolutely extraordinary. And so, when you're describing uh, the pyramids of these different dimensions, you know, nine 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 six 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 three three three, um, stone, or are they made of another material? Every time anybody says pyramids, I'm already thinking about what I just witnessed. In <laughs> well, the Palladians built them um, in Egypt, but uh, these have been built by their choice. They're going to be built of a different material. Uh, they're going to be moldavite. And that size of uh, of construction, we don't have enough Moldavite here to be even, even be able to begin to think about creating these things. They're going to be green. They're going to be green. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Man. <laughs> man. But they're actually being built as Stargate, so you can actually travel off planet from pyramid to pyramid, you know, so if you want to go somewhere. Oh, there we go. Yay. <laughs> Moldavite. I love it, actually. I, I love it. I've, I've got so much of it. I've got so much. i got a big... It's powerful stone. It's really it's, powerful. You know, um, uh, I've got uh, different versions of you know, jewelry and things and, and stuff, right? So I've got all, all kinds of it. But I've got a... I got a... I, dude, I've got... I'll, I'll show it to you someday. I, I, I don't wear it out in public uh, too, too often, but I've, I've got a... I got a big one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, Mandy, it's... Mandy bought me a piece, and it was actually, it wasn't cut. It was just uh, raw, and it was putting something, but the chain broke. But that was a big old piece, and it felt really good. Yeah, Some yeah. people don't sit well with mold Moldavite. No, and... Some people I'll... can't wear it, and I love it. Uh, well, here's the, here's the other part uh, of that. It, it's fragile. It's a fragile stone, and... I don't like where I don't like it to be knocked around. Um, I used to have a big multivite ring, right? And it started off one size, but after a couple of years, dude, it just got smaller and smaller <laughs> because I was knocking it. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really bugged Yeah, it's very brittle. Yeah, very so brittle. I just stopped I, I just stopped wearing it. Um uh oh, okay, so anyway, um it um the reason why I bring up Egypt and bringing pyramids of this size, right? So 999, 666, those are both bigger than the Great Pyramid. 333 oh, yeah. three is a little bit smaller, right? Are we yeah. talking feet, right? Is that what Yeah, yeah feet, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that would be a little bit smaller uh, than the Great Pyramid. But um, the, the size of what's in Egypt versus what you're talking about here – they have to have a way to move them. Same thing in, in, in Egypt, right? So how, how would they be transported here? Well, uh, they actually suspend them between two craft. Okay. You know, anti-gravitational, so they weigh nothing. And then they just fly and, you know, they come through a portal and then, you know, they, they basically land them here, you know, uh, anti-gravitational. Yeah. When is this uh, going to happen? Do you have any idea? Well, it should have happened already. I think the problem is is that if you landed pyramids of that caliber down here right now with the current administration of the else, um, they'd try and take them over. So 
we need the right administration, the right people in. You know, so it's got to shift before we do it. But I mean, the the size of the project is huge, you know, and the the banking people who are behind it are putting the money together. It's probably going to cost about two hundred billion dollars because, you know, if you put those permits, imagine how many people want to come and see them per year. Sure. And of course, you you know you've got to feed them. You've got to you know you have meditation gardens. It's going to be about a hundred thousand acres. So. Uh, I know what they'll be cited, but I don't want to say because, of course, you know, they'll all start buying the land up around there. But it's going to be, um, yeah, it's probably, I'm hoping the back end of this year, the first one arrives, the smallest. No one. kidding. No kidding. And and we'll be watching this. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, you come down, Jimmy, will <laughs> film it. Uh, but, but again, you know, I can't promise because, again, it depends on the current state of affairs and they're not going to. These pyramids are actually priceless. You know, you can't ever buy them. You know, they're um, and so you know they're very, very powerful as well. So they they don't want them hijacked by some governmental system. So I don't think they're going to bring them in, until the you know the transition happens and things change. Um, uh, we're going to take a commercial break. Before we get there, do you think that this is part of the re? I know we talked about false flags earlier. But is this is this part of the reason why um, this conversation is happening? I'm talking about ET um, in the public domain, like it is out of Washington D.C. Because uh, they're trying to get out in front of something that they know is about to happen, and could this be it? Uh, you don't want to freak everybody out, right? So is this is this part of it? Yeah. Too? Well, they're trying to train people that there is extraterrestrials. I mean. Often, you know, my, I spoke to my father once. He goes, oh, well, you're just nuts. There's no other extraterrestrials on the nose. I said, well, how obnoxious is that? You know, because, I mean, come on, the universe is infinite. You can't tell me there's another race out there somewhere. You know, I mean, there's there's millions of races. It's just, but I, but I think you're right. I think they're trying to train people that, yes, there is uh, extraterrestrial activity. But, you know, the things about these pyramids, they've been written in certain scriptures and on tablets and things. So they know they're coming. And uh, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, man, such a great point. Our guest tonight, <laughs> Dr. Chris Macklin. Chris, you stay right there. Let's take a quick break. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Please visit all of our sponsors. We're taking a quick break here. All of the links are below. And we'll be right back. Check out Billy Carson's Forbidden Knowledge. ForbiddenKnowledge.com or ForbiddenKnowledge.tv where you can get access to over 6,000 videos, movies, TV series, exclusive documentaries like the Black Knight Satellite. You can do it all for just $7.77 per month or $77 per year after the three-day trial, which is also totally free to check out. It's all simple to do. Billy Carson is the best. It's simple. ForbiddenKnowledge.com or ForbiddenKnowledge.tv TV. That's the number four for BK. I will be hosting and emceeing the Conscious Life Expo this February 10th through the 13th at the LAX Hilton right here in Los Angeles, California. 200 speakers, including Linda Moulton Howe, Bashar, Deborah King, George Norrie, Daniel Sheehan, Scott Walter Shonstone, and David Wolf. Over 200 vendors, special events. This is the biggest event of its kind on planet Earth. You've got to come and hang out with all of us. Tickets and info at ConsciousLifeExpo.com. The links are below. On Saturday, April 1st, that's right, April Fool's Day, 2023, I will be hosting the Parapod Festival at the Hyatt Regency right here in Valencia, California. It's a live, one-day podcast awards. It's a film festival. It's a full-on media event. We're going to have sky watching. There's going to be a Lifetime Achievement Award presented to Linda Moulton Howe. Right now, you can submit your podcast, your film, your TV series, any of your paranormal media for consideration. You can do all of that on the links below. For info and tickets, go to parapodfilmfest.com. That's parapodfilmfest.com. April 7th through the 14th, 2023, I'll be hosting and presenting on the Hidden Secrets Seminar at Sea Cruise. 
from Los Angeles to the Mexican Riviera on the Navigator of the Seas. That's right, up top, a giant water slide. You've got to check out the Navigator of the Seas. It's amazing. We've got Scott Walter, Adam Apollo, Nick Pope, Brad Olson, Vivian Chavez, Jason Shirka, Robert Grant, Ruben Langdon, and another 12 amazing speakers and presenters. It's all simple to do. Just visit divinetravels.com forward slash hidden secrets 2023. You know you want to go on a cruise with me. River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black Blend. Truly the best coffee on planet Earth. Just visit rivermoonwellness.com or, or their Amazon store. It's all simple to do. You can check out the Fade to Black Blend, the Game Changer Blend, or any of their Black Moon Wellness products. It's the only coffee I drink. It is the best, and it's dark. Again, rivermoonwellness.com all right welcome back fade to black i am your host jimmy church tonight our guest is dr christopher macklin and we are discussing off-planet uh ai and nanotechnology and its effects on humanity uh welcome back chris you mentioned earlier uh that uh you're you're in contact uh with uh princess die I'm not going to let that uh, get bias. We just kept talking. There's no way we're not going to circle back to that. Um, uh, how does that happen? And and what do you guys talk about? Well, I'm, I haven't had much contact with her. I've had telepathy contact. And what was interesting is this, that uh, I didn't realize at the time that she was because that being, I, I discovered that afterwards. But I remember years ago uh, going on a holiday, the, the, and it was the time she did die, so, supposedly die, in quotes. So what happened is that I um, I fell asleep. Then in the morning, I woke up, I had a vivid dream that we were back in the press together and we talked to the press and doing stuff. And, and I woke up and I was in Spain. And of course, the news, um, always the newspapers arrived next day because there was a day delayed. And I was saying to my ex-wife, I don't understand why I was dreaming. I was right there with Princess Diana, you know, talking to the press about different things. And then about an hour or two later, it was leaked that, wow, you know, uh, she's supposedly, in quotes, passed away. But she just, uh, you know, she's not passed away. She just got out the way, you know, uh, so that she wasn't affected. And I think things are going to change now. The uh, the Queen's disappeared. And um, hopefully she'll be back in the limelight one of these days when she's ready. Very interesting. Very interesting. Why do you, um, is... <sighs> The last three, four, five years, um, maybe we could probably push it back to six. It seems that uh, the world, is, instead of coming together, is is getting more uh, divided. And I think a lot of that can be put on AI and, and social media uh, uh, directly. There seems to be an agenda there. I can't figure out what is going on. But uh, here we have a tool, the internet, that originally, I think the idea is for everybody, was to unite everybody and make friends and contact with people around the world that you would never meet and, and, and bring us closer together and understand cultures and, and, and things like that. Well, the exact opposite seems to be happening, Chris. Um, why, why, why can't humanity react to it and, and see it and and understand what is going on instead of being so complacent I think you know if you if you look at uh, you know Montauk programming and project Mockingbird I love the name project Mockingbird <laughs> I just got to tell you if you don't mind just I'll share something so I may have shared this last time so I phoned my father once and you know he listens to the BBC and I'm like, oh okay you know so he said, we've got a bigger problem. I said, what's that? He goes, uh, cows passing wind. I said, well, what's that doing? It's creating global warming. I said, so you're telling me the BBC told you cows passing wind is creating global warming? Yeah, you know. Said, oh. I said, well, we've, we've fixed it in America. He goes, how have you fixed it? I said, well, we give them tum-tums, settle the stomach, no farting, good to go. <laughs> He goes, oh, my God, I'll, I'll have to write to the uh, Prime Minister. And <laughs> oh, God, like, Mockingbird is like mocking somebody. You know, it's, it's exactly that. And they, they relay it, you know. But 
But I think with all the mind control and everything else and all the media, you know, the media's controlled. Of course, you know, you've got the all the social media controlled. You know, they they shadow ban and ban people if they speak out of turn. And, and I think, you know, it's little by little, it's, it has divided people. Like big time, there's a massive bifurcation. And, you know, some people, you can't talk about anything. You say, okay, um, lips are sealed, you know. It's not worth it, you know. It it has it, it's become its own pandemic, and in, in that you cannot in the world today. You could be some mom, some dad, son, daughter doesn't matter. Just somebody that's on social media, and you just type something like, uh, "I like strawberry cheesecake," and somebody goes, "You what?" <laughs> right, <laughs> and, uh, and you're getting attacked. I just said chocolate chip cookies. You what? And and it it it's like that, where it doesn't matter what you say or what your point of view is. You're going you're going to get attacked for it, and s- for some reason, that's okay. It's okay to be like that. You would never do that. Hopefully, at somebody's house, if if you're a guest. But today, this is this is everywhere all the time, period. It's now a lifestyle. Well, it is. And I think people think it's about social media. Imagine, you know, let's take, for example, a lady called Betty, for example. So she's just been to the doctor. You know, she told us she's got cancer. She's got a week to live or something, you know. And she goes up home all pissed off and upset. And she puts something on social media that's out of turn. Everyone berates her. There's no accountability. There's no, you know, people are cowards. They can say what they like, and what can you do? I mean, even admissible evidence in in court of law, it's classed as uh, hearsay. You know, so you can't take something into the court of law. Or they threaten to kill me or something. Oh, it's just hearsay. You know, uh, because they won't take anything from YouTube, Facebook, anything. And I think that's wrong. You know, I, I think there should be well. There should have been more regulation, and it, you know, of course, people can't speak the truth. You know, you, you get shadow banned, you get banned. You know, we've been shadow banned. I think for the um, for the healings I do, you know, and a couple of I got a couple of strikes. So at the start of the healings, I always say, "Look, big tech, this is the deal. I'm not a medical doctor. Go consult your doctor. Phone nine one one if you got an emergency. This is a purely spiritual exercise." And ever since I've said that at the start, they seem okay with it. Otherwise, they were flagging us for medical misinformation. Oh, this is crazy, you know. So, been interesting. Is is that um, the the negativity uh, that is now out in the open uh, with social media? Is this part of the control agenda? Yeah, I think the biggest control is stress, and I think getting people stressed. You know, I mean, they they haven't got enough money to buy food properly, and they can't afford to live. People lose their houses. You know, you look at. Uh, Relationships are breaking down because of the stress. You know, you keep people under stress, you've got control of them, you know, and, and it creates, like you say, reactions, um, probably narcissic type reactions where it's all about me and how dare you say you like a strawberry cheesecake, you know, because you should have had raspberry, you know, and that's it. Right, you know, so, right, right. Okay. Right, <laughs> right. Who, who cares anyway? But, but I, I do think you're right, you know, and I think the mental state of America right now and all over the world, I mean, I see it because I, I work on so many people. I can see the decline. I mean, honestly, Jimmy, this doing the healings probably four or five years ago was a breeze, you know. So, oh, I feel so I'm getting my power back. Everything else. Now we're helping people navigate through this world, you know, uh, through everyday life because they're struggling right now, especially if you're a star seed. I mean, you know, star seed people. They're huge empaths, you know, and I'm the same, you know. And when I was younger, you know, if someone talked behind my back, I, I'd be mortified to the point of almost throwing up. I was so upset, you know. Mm-hmm. How could someone talk about behind my back? Now, um, couldn't care less, you know. Um, I think my, in quotes, couldn't give a shit almost has blown up. And so, you know, I don't care whether people talk about me. It doesn't matter. I know, you know, I think when you take your power back, if you know you're a good person and doing your very best, am I perfect? Hang on, let's ask some accusers. Oh, no, that's, that's a no. <laughs> How right. do you mean no? <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> right, right. But, no, but nobody's perfect. But, you know, I do my very best to help people. And that's the key, I think. You know, I'm, I'm a no-bullshit person. I tell it like it is. I'm, I'm honest, open, and raw. And I think that's what's key, you know. 
I don't put things on. I don't talk to you about things I've never seen or make things up because I've seen them. You know, I've been there, you know. And so I think that's the key. So, you know, if, if you take your power back, and that's the thing about the healings, you know, I'm really helping people to take their power back, releasing the emotion of which we, you know, I, I've worked out we probably ingest something like over 100,000 layers of emotion, you know, and it's too much for a human being. And so, you know, we have a fast track method of getting rid of it. And, you know, by getting rid of that emotion stuff, you know, wow, I feel so much better. I feel lighter, heart shock is clear. And, uh, you know, you get back to that sovereign place. I mean, to me, you know, I leap out of bed. I mean, I'm 60, so it was you, you know. Mm -hmm. I probably look a bit older because metallic silver, I dyed it the other day because someone said it was the in color. I don't know what to say. <laughs> but, but I think, you know, I think, um, if you can find that absolute burning passion, I mean, I, you know, you've got a passion for this, Jimmy, and you do great. I can see the passion burning within you. I want to do it right. Like we were saying earlier, you know, having the right equipment, you know, we spent about fifty or $60,000 on equipment because I want to walk in, I want to switch it on, it works. I don't want to panic, oh, my God, the computer's gone again or something's fell over, you know, everything works perfectly. And I think, you know, so when you've got a burning passion, you know, and, and you're doing this stuff, you know, it gives you the will to just carry on and step out there and help as many people as possible. And that's that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. And I used to now I've always tripped out on the world. I always have since I, since I was a kid. I've, I've, I've just wondered about everything. And I enjoy uh, chasing answers and, and, and knowledge. It's, it's part of me. But here's the deal. Um, I didn't want to be, you know, you're listening to late night talk radio and you're listening to the callers, you know, call in. So last week I went to Venus, you know, and I'm just like, oh, man, come on with that. Stop with that <laughs> stuff. I didn't want to be that person. Now I am. I haven't been to Venus, but now I am. And I don't give a crap. I don't care what people think. When um, I was out, this is the this is on everything that I love, Chris. I'm out. I've got a couple hundred people around me, and uh, it's at night. We're doing a sky watch, and we're having a great time. We're yelling and screaming and 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 doing our thing. And uh, right above us, just took up a huge chunk of the sky, night sky. This green aquamarine blue thing it was like between blue and green i can't describe the color but that 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 color right okay not orange not red not white it was like blue green comes across this it lights up it comes across this guy the whole thing lasted about two seconds maybe one two seconds and it and it goes it, it makes it backwards z it goes backwards it goes fruit 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 and then disappears. Low, too. It wasn't high in the sky. It was low. And now, you see that, and I need, and I have to say with a straight face to somebody later what I just saw, I'm now the crazy dude that calls into the late night talk show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right, 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 right. I can't, you know, what do you do with that? Well, you know what? I don't give a crap. We all saw it together. There's obviously something going on. You see something like that show off for you. That's what it's doing. It's saying hello, right? It's, yeah, no. Hi, guys. You know. That's exactly what it was. Now, I don't care what people think. No, I don't either. I had 200 people around me that we all saw it together. We all screamed at the same time when that thing lit up in the sky. And uh, it was insane. But it doesn't change uh, what I saw, you know, saying it out loud, um, not talking about it is wrong. And that is just who I am. And that's it. That's it. And that's that I, I, I will live that truth. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I was at the ranch, you know, those three craft, they were going like one to three. And what happened after, I think it was about five, six minutes, military helicopters were in this, you know, were scrambled and they, they were circling around them, not too close to them, but they were circling around. You could see, like, what the heck do we do with these? <laughs> and they stayed there for about... This portal was open for about 40 minutes, and then what I did is decide to get a method of shutting it down. So I closed it, 
and it actually never came back, you know. So the guy was delighted that his, you know, his his horses were safe again, you know. But um, so check this out. I want you to look at the screen, Jimmy. In 2017, I saw that Z maneuver, and nobody believes me, right? And that's why. <laughs> that's why, Chris. I, I. That's why I talk about it, because everybody that was there. They can talk about it, and people are going to say, you know, but they can go, you know what? Jimmy Church was there, and he talks about it on the air. You can go and listen to it. He was there. They need, you know, my voice. They need your voice. They need yeah. that support, and I, I will never stop. I don't care how – I don't I don't care what people say about me. I just – I don't. No, I don't either. I'm, I'm past all that, you know. I mean, I used to, and now, you know, I've realized that it's such a difficult – even doing healings, you know, some people are so grateful. You know, a lot of people are really grateful. We have some amazing clients, but, you know, you can't guarantee that someone's not going to turn on you. And, oh, well, you know, whatever, you know. And uh, I just say, well, look, you know, go get healing somewhere else. It's okay. You know, we love you. Bye. You know, and um, I don't care what. I remember <laughs> I remember going out with a Southern Baptist family, you know, a husband and wife, and this was when I first got here. So, so you're sitting there and ordered lunch and, What's the biggest question people ask you? What do you do for a living? I thought, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh no. So I said, well, um, I said to do healing. And they looked at me. Is it in the name of the Lord? I said, <laughs> well, oh, kind of. <laughs> so, and you know, then I start, oh, I thought I'll forget it. Let's just tell them the whole thing. <laughs> and so the eyes, they got the fluoride stare and we were never invited for dinner again. <laughs> That's amazing. So, yeah, so amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, I, I kind of want to stay right there for a second. Um, that 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 is a tough road, except it's getting easier, right? It, it, it's getting easier to talk about these things uh, today. Uh, science is is on our side for sure. Um, universities are are speaking about the subject, and of course, the government is too as well. And then you've got uh, all of the mass media uh, talking about it, and certainly, ancient aliens doesn't hurt. I, I if you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. now, now it's out front. It used to be that taboo subject in the back, right? But now it's getting easier and easier. And I think that most out there that uh, are uh, you know are, are aware of it? Have always thought about it. They just didn't talk about it, right? Yeah. It, it, you know what I mean. And so now, where somebody says, "Well, of course we're not alone in the universe, right? The universe is too big of a place." Well, where were you 15 years ago when we needed that support? But yeah, but it is getting easier, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. I mean, uh, people are accepting it more now, and you know, especially when you say, "Look, the universe is infinite." Do you not realise there's got to be at least one more species, if not thousands, out there, if not millions? Because, you know, the universe is huge, and so, yeah, I think people are getting more uh, more comfortable with that now, and they're not so worried about it. I think people have this, oh, you know, I don't want to think about off-planet beings because what if they're not very nice and come to Earth and do something? So. I think again, sometimes it's it's just let's just block it out because I've got too much fear about it. Well, that that's the best point right there, because we can say what we want in our community. We've been, you know, we've had our experiences and th and things, but these are the facts. Twenty five years ago, there were zero exoplanets, zero, right, zero. And we know that the universe, and we knew, you know, that the universe is a big, big place and the Milky Way is a big, big place. But we still thought maybe, maybe, maybe our solar system is all there is. Then we found the first one, then the second one. And then the, and now we know today that every star that you can see has at least one planet. Every, th this is the facts. And this is the way that science has introduced this to the rest of the world. Now we understand this. I was out, you know, Avi Loeb, right? And yeah, I go out to dinner with him a few months ago, sitting at this table. 
and uh, sitting next to Avi, and we start having this conversation about planets in the Milky Way. And I said, I said, well, you know, you know, Avi, there's about forty billion uh, Earth-like rocky planets, and he goes, no, there's not. I said, yeah, there are. And he goes, no, a trillion. Right. So that <laughs> now that's that's uh, that's that's Avi, right? Yeah. That Harvard physicist. This is where now it is so much easier to understand how much life there is. It's got to be great. It's not one race of grays. No, no. there's thousands. Thousands. <laughs> right. Thousands of reptilians. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It has to be, uh, I, I don't know, In, infinite is a really big number. But it, it's a lot. There has to be that just in our Milky Way, in our galactic neighborhood. Absolutely, yeah. So imagine, you know, imagine this third dimensional whole um, whole area, you know, of the whole universe of this third dimensional world. Imagine how many beings there are when we just look at the Milky Way, you know, it's 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 huge, you know. And then you've got infinite dimensions, and you think, wow, okay. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. How many, uh, do, you, do you have a number? How many uh, different races, uh, species of ET are visiting uh, our planet right now? Not in the past, but like right now. I don't have a number, actually. I mean, the the, the, the main ones are, uh, well, the Pleiadians, Andromedans, uh, Actorians, uh, Lumerians, Lyrans, you know, they're all coming down here to support us. You know, they're the good guys. And of course, we've got the reptilian element who is parked here under the planet. Um, and Luciferians, of course, connect to the Vatican. So, you know, um, yeah, there's probably more, but, you know, they're the main ones that are. So. Uh, the, I don't do religion on this show, but I've got to uh, stop you right there for a second. Are, are you saying that the Luciferians that are connected to the Vatican are ET? Oh, yeah. Well, the ET, yeah. Uh, extraterrestrial, yeah. Are they? Absolutely. Real? They're the ones, you know, if they attach to your body, it's really interesting because when they attach to your body, if they leave, um, they kind of can, you know, you know, when Jesus was exercising people, I mean, I love Jesus' teachings, but I'm not a Christian. I don't follow any religion, but but um, I believe they're the ones who he came across the most because when they leave, they get all, they get a hissy fit. They start to come talk your body or speak through your voice box in a snarly, raspy voice. I remember being at the Conscious Life Expo um, about seven years ago eight years ago and this lady had 53 um of these things in her body and every time i was taking them out she's like ah, i remember <laughs> that i, I remember I, that. everyone was walking past like, oh my god what the hell's that you know i remember that yeah. yeah i remember that I, it, took, I it, took, it took me about an hour and a half i took them all out and she was great after blessing but um she was she bet did she remember it uh some of it i think but they, they kind of possessed her, you know, because they were laughing. Ah, you can't get me. Oh, yeah, I can. Out, right, the next one. <laughs> Out, right, the next one. After 53, I was kind of, I'm, I'm done I, with I this. Remember, <laughs> I remember people talking about this. I remember that whole thing. Um, yeah, because people were freaked out. They're, oh, I'm not going near this table. It's got this like wild woman on it. I remember that. Snarly right? and hissy. <laughs> I remember that. Hey, man, have you been down there to see what Macklin's doing right now? I remember that whole. I I remember that. <laughs> um, we got uh, rid of them. Uh, the the warning signs are in front of us, and 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 certainly they are there. But now we need to discuss what to do about it. And that's that's the other thing. Awareness is one thing. But but what do we do as individuals? I think it's our job to hold the space. I mean, I, th I think there's a few, you know, people talk about the, in quotes, white hats, people are going to change it, you know. And I, I, think, I think they're the people who are going to take it down. You know, I'm not a take it down. You know, I'm a rebuilder, you know. And, and I think we all are in this community. But... Also, you know, let's hold the space for it. I mean, you know, once every 120 days, we do a God ritual to counteract the satanic stuff they do. And we used to have 4,000 people. We had 300, 400 last time, whatever, you know. But, but what it is is, you know, to me, God's way more powerful. The prime creator is way more powerful than all this nonsense going on down here and money and everything else. It's just nonsense. And so if you get people together... 
and last time we had, I think it was about 360. And uh, what we do is just, you know, go through the whole thing, like, you know, dear God, uh, for these groups, you know, like, uh, for example, it's deep state, you know, big agriculture, big tech, big this, big that, you know, I bring them all before you, God, for justice and release them to you, God, with unconditional love. That's the basis of it. And then what we do is create a ritual like that, because that's a map of intent saying, and I command you reinstate this God every day at 3 p.m. Central Time for the next 120 days. And then you go through the next list of people. And it's, it's a very powerful exercise, you know. I would. Uh, where, where can uh, everybody participate in that? The next one will be about we we did it in about uh, five weeks ago. So the next one will be in about June. So what I might do, Jimmy, if I can, is if we contact you, see if you see if you can participate and email it out. Because to me, it's you know it's free to join. You know, I want everyone. You know, and you know, we've got it. We've got it down to a T. And people say, "Oh my God, it's so powerful." And it's just really calling all these big names out, um, you know, uh, the CDC, FDA, everything, you know, all the governmental systems, CIA, FBI, everything, and bringing them before God. Because, again, to be getting angry and getting all pissed off, and, oh, God, it's all satanic, you know, that's not doing any use at all. You know, if you do a controlled, if you do a controlled map of intent with power behind it, with, you know, a thousand people on, we're going to make, you know, we're going to we're going to change some things, and, and we are changing some things. I know they really work, and I know they really help. The, um, w- one of the things that uh, uh, I, I love, I'm very interested in, is different types of mass meditation like this with intent, right? And now it sounds all hippy dippy and spiritual and awakened and and all of that stuff oh okay all right you know walk around with a pyramid on your head okay whatever however people want to look at this but science says that it is so right with moment yes with with the connection of everything and it's 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 really really funny um I know that you're 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 doing your thing, or there's a mass meditation going on, and something's happening. I know that there is some dude walking down the street in Manhattan, just bitching and complaining, right? And and then and we're firing off that energy, and he goes, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa! What was that?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, 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 I feel pretty good, you know. <laughs> but, and I'm being very, very serious with that. I I think there is something to it. And then you turn around and you have science say, well, this is actually what is going on. And I go, okay, all right, it, it is powerful and it's not crazy talk. No, it's not. You know, what's interesting actually is that um Last time it was okay, but the, the, the last two times before, Zoom at a particular point when we got to Big Pharma just shut down the, the meeting. And I said to everyone, look, before we start, if the meeting shuts down, just stay on it. We'll bring it back. We'll get you back on. And they did, bless them, you know. But, uh, but you know, it was about, I think, 10 or 12 minutes in, you know, it went off. <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, you're listening. You don't like, you know, they don't like what we're doing, but that's okay, you know. Um, can, can I can I ask you about Boston Dynamics? You know the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I watched a, a video uh, the other day. Now, every time I see a Boston Dynamics uh, video, um, it throws me off my game. It scares the crap out of me. Actually, right? It throws me off my game. This stuff is getting too good. Um, the dog robots, the sentry things were were pretty freaky. But I saw that I saw one of the recent videos of this uh, uh, Android AI bot um, on its own assisting a construction worker do some work, right? And I watched it really closely, and it had man, I, it was so dark. It had a human feel in its motion, in its thing, and it it had this like groove to it. It had this thing. It wasn't all er 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 er. You, you know how they flow. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy, 
And that, I think, is a, a sign of things to come if we don't rope that in. That part of society um, is is right on the horizon, Chris. It's right there. Oh, it is, yeah. The problem is with human beings, I think it, it's easy to forget it's robotic by – and they they – they design, I think, the movements, but don't forget, it's still logical. It's working on algorithms. It's working on looking, you know, lookup tables. Oh, I said this last time. I've got to say that. But you know, to us, if it interfaces well enough, it, it's it could be it could be seen as real, you know. And that's the sad thing, because it's not. Again, you know, it's it's mind control. You know, being able to manipulate the mind to start feeling like you know, you buy a girlfriend ten thousand dollars or whatever, or a wife or whatever you want. It's robotic, and it starts learning what you like. And but there's no relationship there. It's it's logical, you know. It learns what you like and everything else. But you know that human connection, that energy between two people, it's not there. You know? Yeah, the the processing speed, uh, like you're saying, right? It's it's tables and and, and things. But um, the processing speed is so fast now that the fluidity. I don't know how to explain it. The human, you know, what you and I do, right? This thing, yeah. it's doing that now, right? Yeah, it know, is. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's crazy. You put some skin on that and you may not know, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty wild. Well, uh, then you get some music on and say, well, I'm doing stuff and I'm rocking it around. And this thing's like nuts, you know, but but it's still logical. You've got to go back to the, it's logic. It's it's algorithm. It's not it's not human. But they're they're getting more and more human like all the time. But you'll never ever get that love. You'll never ever get that god energy. You know? Oh yeah, some humans just don't care. See, that's the no, thing. They don't. Yeah. What what about uh, if everybody's talking about Chat GPT? And uh, it it seems to be everywhere now um, in that we may not be fully aware of how it's being implemented anymore. Um, it, it's, it's part of search engines. It's part of conversations. You can, you can access it yourself. You can ask it to do things for you, right? You literally can do that now. Um, is this crossing? Is this a red line? I think so. I mean, I think robotics does have its place, you know, to help. Um, I mean, especially depending on what happens in the future, you know, if we lose people off the planet, whatever, you know, you may need robotics to even build cars, you know, because there won't be enough people. But but I think they can go beyond where, you know, if you're not careful, and these algorithms learn, of course, you know, you learn it, you know, you look up tables, get bigger and bigger, you learn more stuff, and the faster it goes, you know, the more computer power. And these, you know, these things, I remember... When I was doing flight control systems at Cranfield, we had a Cray, you know, and, and they were like the fastest computer, helium, liquid helium cooled or whatever. And, and now it just looks like a, you know, like the things we've got, you know, the Lenovo Legions, it probably goes that fast. But then it was the fastest computer. It was about, I don't know, $8 million, whatever, you know. Now all these, you know, these quantum computers are way, way above that. Um, uh, but uh, I'm referring to the chat chatbot the ai chatbot chat uh gpt G yeah yeah g p G i think it's gpt you know something yeah. yeah man man i uh, i should ask it <laughs> yeah you should ask it what do you think is going to happen in the future it's interesting because uh mandy um my wife you know she uh came across something they'd they'd given an ai and got it to watch like three three or four hallmark movies and then it had to write its own movie, and it was really funny because, you know, it goes, I go to a nice man with briefcase. Uh, my husband bones, you know, <laughs> like he's passed away. And then it it said uh, something about, you know, later on it said, shut your sound. You know? <laughs> it, really, it didn't quite get the, you know, but it, it was interesting. But I think they're, they're far more advanced now. You know, they really are. I mean, I remember in 1980. Or was it 78, 80? About 1981, I worked on a system with Marconi um, at uh, Farnborough, you know, Farnborough, the uh, military base. Mm -hmm. And I remember this speech recognition thing, and I said, Cove Radio. And it went, <laughs> and then came up with Cove Radio. It took about 30 seconds to recognize it. 
And now, you know, you look at it and, you know, even on Google, you say, uh, oh, can you search for a greenhouse or whatever you say? And it just comes straight up. I mean, the technology. But that's the thing. The technology between then and now is so far advanced, it doesn't make sense. It's off planet, you know. And do we need an off switch for this? You know, and, and, and I, you know, I know it's talked about a lot, but I'm not so sure if there are safety protocols in place. I'm talking for Boston Dynamics all the way over to these AI chat bots and, and, and chat uh, GPT. By the way, it's GPT. Um, uh, no off switch. Right, and I, I I read something the other day. Um, Microsoft added it to their Bing search engine, and there's issues with it. Right, there are some like issues with it. Microsoft said, well, yeah, "We can't really remove it." I thought, "Wait a minute, who thought who who who's thinking through this right now?" What do well, you- I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? I, I mean, you know, I. Th- there's no regulation for this stuff, though. I mean, did you see the Boston Dynamic when they had the, the dog and was it a dog or, you know, the, the robot was actually, you know, with a, a weapon and it went up to the guy and didn't shoot him. And then, you know, it would find a target and shoot at it and absolutely accurate and everything else. And I thought this is the way probably the military is going to go. But what happens if someone puts a virus in this stuff and it starts attacking your own people? You know, well, that's isn't that the issue? I, I think that's oh, what it is huge. Yeah, that's one of the biggest problems um, in when we talk about AI and we talk about the control of everything, and then we turn around. I have a smart home. Okay, I do. I thought I would never do it, but I do now. Okay, I do. I have a smart home, um, and I've seen the TV series Black Mirror, and and the warning signs that are there. But here's what freaks me out: um, Android. Android is the software that is running all of your Android, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, That is running all of your smart refrigerators, your smartphone, your smart home, your thermostat, your security system. Um, And it, it doesn't take much for some hacker to decide one day because he was bored or she was bored to um, thread a virus through the Android operating system that is in the refrigerators of all the smart homes across the country. And suddenly your food has spoiled. Oh yeah. That's just one idea. That's just one thing, but that's the control that we're giving up, Chris, right? Oh yeah. Giving that up. Well, it's the same with, uh, you know, we bought a Samsung thing because, um, long story short, but we bought my father-in-law's house and we rented it to um, one of my, my, my wife's siblings plus two other guys. And the cooker was shot. So we bought a new range, you know. And, of course, first thing it says, download the app. I said, I don't want to download the app. I just want to cook stuff, you know. Right. We're not interested in the app, you know, so we didn't. Then you couldn't set the clock. or the how. So I had to go back to Best Buy I said, how do you set the clock manually? Oh, you do it this way, and you know, but it didn't didn't tell you the book. Just download the app, you're good to go. I don't want an app for my cooking facility. I just want to cook on it. You know, so it's, but uh, it's crazy. But you know, what happens again? Like you say, what happens if they put some sort of thing where they put the oven on full blast? They put the range, you know, the 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 heaters on t- on top of it. What happens if you left a towel on it or something? You know, you could end up in trouble with it. So you know, it's uh, it is it is concerning. You know, yeah. I think there has to be some regulation. I was talking about this actually at the um, Conscious Life Expo because I streamed in. I couldn't go. Well, I didn't go actually because last time I went was about six years ago. I got dusted a bioweapon and I'm working on this thing. It's collected here. Now it's a lot smaller, as you can probably see. So it's doing well. But so I said I'd stream in and, you know, I streamed in and some guy got upset. Well, I don't listen to fear. It's not fear. It, it's actually we need to really think about this stuff and do something. Like you say, it needs an off switch. Mm -hmm. Where's the off switch? How do you kill it, you know, if some virus gets in? Because otherwise uh, you could end up in trouble with it, you know. I was, um, okay, so I'm all smarted out, right? 
I'm lying in bed and up above my bed, this is about six months ago. I think I talked about this on the air, um, is uh, the the vent, right, for heating and cooling. Uh, and yeah. it's, about, it's about 20 feet up, right, high. Uh, but it blows right down on where my bed is in, in the bedroom. I'm lying there, and it's like the heater's on. I'm like, I thought I turned it off. And it's <laughs> so I take out my phone, right? Pull it up, just like I, I can do it right now, right? Okay, there it is. There's the app. You can see it's 72 degrees in here. Do I want to go up or down, right? And so forth. It says you are disconnected from the network. <laughs> what? So now, you know what I got to do? I got to get my slappy butt up, go downstairs, and try to figure out what's going on. It won't shut off. Won't shut off. I go. I'm I'm rebooting routers. I'm I'm the thing. I'm now on the internet. I'm looking at the company for the smart, uh, you know, uh, hub. You're trying to figure this out. Won't turn off. Will not. I had to go. I had to suffer. So I go over to the the, the main control box. I'm unplugging stuff. Right? I'm, I'm taking it out of the wall. Batteries out of this. this I disconnect everything. Furnace will not turn off. Won't turn off. <laughs> so I, I'm lying in bed, <clears throat> roasting, <clears throat> with this thing blasting down on me. In the morning, I call the company and this and that, and and I had to turn everything back on. They are downloading new uh, 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 software from their hub. I couldn't do it from here. Point being, anybody can disrupt that service. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Right? right? And this is what we're giving up. There was something, uh, there was a certain honor among men when only your father could touch the thermostat, right? <laughs> right, right? Yeah, you know right? Oh, yeah. Thing, and he would adjust it, and, and that was off limits. And uh, that I don't have that control anymore. And, yeah. and that scares me. Any hacker that wants to come in and, and, and disrupt uh, through Android, which is the, you know, the software that's running all of this stuff, could disrupt the entire country. Could you oh, they could, yeah. they could just get a virus that'll spread out. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It scares the crap out of me. It scares the crap. There is a convenience factor, though, where I can sit in bed and go, well, but I think 65 sounds pretty good. Air conditioning <laughs> on, and I'm doing it from bed, and I'm not going downstairs and all of that. I love that part of it. It's when it goes wrong. Right, like yeah. I, I've seen, I've seen Black Mirror. All of, um, do you have a smart home? No, I don't. Okay, no. all, right. all right. We're actually building. To be honest, we're building a house. I'm going to get some of it smart, but not the whole thing. We're building I, a house. We've got 42 acres, and it's it's going to be a big house. But I think there'll be elements, you know, like the heating, cooling, maybe. But um, I think you know, I, you know, with lighting and stuff, I'm I'm not really that bothered. But right, I, I've done all of that. And here's 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 the uh, this this stuff just freaks me out. This is the AI off planet stuff that I'm talking about. All of my locks, all of my locks, are electronic now. I don't have keys on a keychain, Chris. That must feel weird, though. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. Right. And now, so I'm so freaked out about it. I know that there are people that are listening to me right now. They get it. I can't go outside without my phone. Why? What if the house decides to lock me out? Right. <laughs> God, yeah. right. You're locked out forever. Let me in. <laughs> right. I, I, I can't get back in my own home. And it's, uh, you know, now I have keys somewhere. I haven't, I, I don't even know where they are. You know, I got a keychain with keys on it somewhere, but I don't, I don't leave the house with those. I leave the house with this. Yeah. Right? That's crazy. That's crazy. I, I think we've given up too much. 
Yeah, I think we have, you know. I mean, I like the old lock and key, you know. I, must have, I like the same key for every door, but, you know, if you've got one key, it's good to go. I mean, you know, certainly cars are like that, you know, you just got a start button and you just, you know, as long as you've got the keychain in your pocket, you can open the car and everything else. Well, isn't, and go isn't ET, yeah, Chris, isn't it, it, this has to be an ET agenda. It has to be, man. It, it's happened too quick. And 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 we've given up that very control, um, not only in our lives with the internet and what we watch, what we see, what we're told, what we're fed, the information, our health and everything, all the way down to our locations, uh, our habits, what we do, uh, email, our relationships. Um, everything now is 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 it's a meta. It's a metaverse, man. It's, it's, it is, yeah. I think, you know, I personally think people, I mean, I don't like phones uh, that much. I mean, I don't spend time on it. Um, of course, I phone people up with it, but I have to have it because of the ministry, because, you know, I've got the uh, calendar on it and different things. But, you know, I don't use it that much because, you know, I think it's good to stay off it for a while. And, you know, I'd encourage everyone with that because you need to do some other stuff. We get addicted. I've switched all the notifications off because it goes ding, you know, oh, Who's that? You know, and, and you just, it's like an automatic reaction. Let's go and have a look right now. And people seem to expect like um, a return text or something within like minutes nowadays. So, and I don't work like that. It's, oh, okay, I'll get, I'll get it later. You know what I mean? Well, you know, if you've got notifications pinging all day, you know, you're going to get PTSD. Oh, my God. Look, what's that? Oh, what's that? You know, and, and it, it, it puts a lot of stress, I think, in your system without yeah. even realizing it. Yeah, but now you're showing your age. And let me tell you why. Yeah, uh, probably. It, yeah, because the the, the generations uh, 30 and under, all of it, their DNA is fundamentally changed. Their relationships are here. Their friends are here. They are friends. They are, clo- they are emotionally uh, entwined with people they have never met in person. Yeah. Right, and and they understand this world. This is their community. Um, all of it, all of it, all of it, all, everything that they do, everything uh, throughout. It, it, it's all right here now, and I think it's fundamentally changed DNA. Yeah, I think it has because emotion and things like this. It's a DNA changer for sure. You know, I mean, they do operate differently than probably we do. You know. I, 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 I remember when I was at Cranfield, they had the, remember Digital, you know, the computer company. Yeah, I do, yeah. Well, we had a we had a VAX uh, 1170, and it was like, you know, it was like a huge thing here. And we had this, we had the hard drive, which <laughs> it was 80, um, not even kilobytes, was it? Yeah, was it 80 bytes? or It was really small, but a huge thing, you know. And then you got the 12-inch floppy drive, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I used to get this thing to run things. It used to take about four days to run some algorithms, you know, for flight control systems. Now you could do it in seconds. You know, it's, it's incredible. Well, it has got a. Here's but but here's the trippy thing, and, and I kind of uh, uh, we we've given we've we we gave in too quickly, without understanding the implications. We we tapped out. We tapped out. We we have given in to the digital lifestyle. And you mentioned this earlier. I'm going to circle back. In China, in Japan, that's your girlfriend, right? Yeah. That's your boyfriend. In You have a digital companion that keeps you company. That's your friend. That's, and they know they're looking at it. They know it's it's anime. They know it's anime. They know it's not real, but they don't care. It's no. it's emotional thing. And if that is an evidence of tapping out, right, where this is an accepted social norm, it is normal to have your best friend be uh, an AI chatbot. That's pretty scary, isn't it? Oh, it is. And it desensitizes people, you know, because they get used to that. Like you're saying, you get used to Boston dynamic, you get used to the way it wiggles around and, you know, it's got human-like, you know, movement. And and so 
you know, your mind's kind of say, oh, you know, maybe it's human. It's not, of course, but, you know. But I think it really does desensitize people. Um, it is, is one of the best ways to do it is, is the way that you're doing it, which is, you know, put your phone down. I think you've got to have some discipline with the phone. In my opinion, that, that's just because I work on a lot of, uh, um, I work on a lot of, uh, mental health issues, you know, and I actually support a lot of psychiatrists, psychologists, psych, you know, psychotherapists, because honestly, Jimmy, they're struggling right now because you know, whereas they may do like eight sessions for people, they can't cope with it because the amount of angst in some people and what's happening, uh, they're overloaded. So, you know, we kind of support them by releasing the emotion of the else. But one thing I'm seeing is that we're trying to encourage people like, you know, detach from the phone a bit. You, you've got to have phone time. You've got to have not and uh, switch off the, the, you know, the notifications because they just cause PTSD in some people. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you know, it's just, a, I've got to look at it, you know, and mm -hmm. they don't, you know, you know, let's all relax, and the, you know, yeah. Time without phone, you know, maybe leave it in the house and just, you know, go and see it, you know, for the next two or three hours. But the only problem is, of course, with alarms, you know, the, my phone's got alarm and so it has to be by the bed. <laughs> and, you know, they're good alarms, but, you know, you, you have to, I think you have to detach from the social media stuff. To me, getting back to nature, my favorite thing on our property, you know, we've got so many trees and it's got a huge fire pit, you know, you can cook things in the fire. So when we go down there, the, the best thing I can think of is just sitting there, having a beer and sitting amongst the trees because if you've got any angsty energy, you can feel the trees absorb it and you think, wow, this is amazing. You feel so great, you know. There's nothing better than the feeling of nature, but that's just my opinion, you know. Other people think differently. When um, I try to describe, I like to inform, right? And so when I describe people what I feel has been a big part of my growth uh, over the last 10 years is that, believe it or not, I actually talk to somebody for three hours a night. Now, stop and think about what I just said, right? You and I... You communicate, yeah. We're just talking, right? And, and when I suggest to somebody, and I'll do it, man. Chris, I'll look straight in their eyes. You know what? Check this out. Try putting your phone down for three hours and just talk to somebody. I'm like, what? Why would I do that? <laughs> yeah, I could just text them or, you know. Yeah, yeah. Why would I do what, what do you, I what, even, are, are you crazy? I can't do that. And I have been able to do that. Whether I'm doing it on the weekends, uh, you know, I, I was doing coast to coast for six years, seven years. I'm doing this during the week. And and then uh, when I'm not doing that, I'm at a conference. Or when I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm taping a TV show, right, where I'm actually talking to somebody. My phone's off. My phone is turned off right now. Well, it lights up, but it's on mute. Right, I, I don't. It, it it's off. It's off. As a matter of fact, it stays off all day. It, I only use the phone if I'm calling out. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm the same actually. Yeah, if and I call people. You know, yeah, uh, it, I don't text very often. I always call people. I mean, I'm dyslexic anyway, so that you know that creates a problem. And, and, people and, will say, how, "How the heck do you write books?" Oh, that's a long story. You know, you have to dictate them. You know, I'm, I'm not that good. Yeah, but. So, but I think, you know, I, I just love phoning someone. Hi, how are you doing? You know, and it's great to be like in conversations as opposed to texting or emailing or, yeah. yeah. You, I would say that. Do you remember uh, talking? What do you mean? Like a conversation. You remember doing that? Well, kind of. <laughs> right? Yeah. They don't. What did they do that? Yeah. <laughs> it, it just doesn't happen anymore. And, uh, yeah. And, and when I'm at dinner, or first off, it, it's it's not, you know, at the dinner table, number one. But number two, if I'm out at a restaurant or whatever, my phone is in my pocket. It's not on the table. I think that's rude, right? Oh, I'm going to share my attention with you and this phone. No, that's not right. So, no, don't turn it upside down. That's still the same thing. No, take it, put it in your purse, put it in your pocket, and get it off the table. And, yeah, and, present. and, so and be present. present. Be in the now now. 
and I think that's the best way forward. We got to we got to digitally detox, my friend. We got to figure I out. I think we way. do. Actually. I think we do for the for the sake of us all, you know, because I think it's going to, you know, and and also get back to some fun things other than the phone that you can do. You don't have to be on the phone all the time. I mean, you know, do some like if you like cooking or you like this to music, put some music on and you know have some people around, have a beer, have a laugh. You know, that's that. You know, we need community. We don't need the phone's not really a community. It's just a thing, you know. But uh, I would encourage people to do that for the mental for the mental health. Really, yeah, you know, I think it makes you a lot more healthy. You know. Yeah, we jumped in too quick without understanding uh, what we were dealing with. Chris, how can every thank you for another great show and another great conversation? How can everybody reach out and find you? Yeah, if you go to globalenlightenmentproject.com and uh, you know you can you know uh, email us through the website. Uh, you can phone us up. You know we have ten staff. I don't even know that, but um, I've got ten staff doing various things. But you know there's girls in the office who answer the phone. They do the emails. Uh, I've got people doing social media, all that stuff. So, you know, if you, if you just want to reach out, you know, go to globalenlightenmentproject.com and you can send an email through the website and we'll get it and, you know, come try some healings. It might really help, you know, especially now because, like I say, the mental state of this planet's, you know, not very good, especially in the U.S. And I think I can see people getting PTSD, angsty, and when's it going to happen? Well, don't worry about it, you know, just... If you enjoy your life every day, what does it matter what happens tomorrow or the next day? You know, just enjoy mm -hmm. that day because that day is creating your future. There is no future um, until you've created it, you know, in the now right now, you know. And so whatever you do to enjoy yourself will, will shape your future. And that passion, that passion is so important. Thank you so much, my friend. And uh, keep, well, thank keep you. doing what you're doing. Hey, say say hi to Lady Di for me. We we. I oh, will, brothers. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a good word. <laughs> I'm a big fan, big fan, big fan. I am as well. She, she's amazing. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much, my friend. Thanks, Jimmy. And Bless you. Be, up. be be safe out there. It's a crazy world. All right. I'll talk to you, Chris. God thank bless. you so much. Christopher Macklin, and yes, globalenlightenmentproject.com. The links are below. It's all easy to get to, and so go check him out. And, and man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, check out his YouTube channel and some of the stuff that he's working, working on. It's absolutely amazing. Fade to black. All right, we're he heading into the weekend. And uh, this time tomorrow, we should be in the middle of a giant blizzard here in Southern California. So maybe I'll live stream tomorrow. I'm going to be on with uh, Christina Gomez tomorrow as well, doing the news. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2023 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. I'll see everybody tomorrow, but until Monday, have a great, safe, fun, and amazing weekend. That's right. Be safe. Go Beckley Tappy.